For today's grim adventure, we find ourselves in Chandler, Arizona. Boo. <sighs> Visiting a little store, a little horror store here named Terror Trader. Hopefully you guys are ready because they have things inside this store that'll make your skin crawl. Baby ghoul, what are you doing? It smells like a haunted house. It does smell like a haunted house. That weird haunted house fog smell. You ready to go inside? We might be buying a lot of things. This is our second time here at Terror Trader and well, we just love horror. All right, let's get walking through here and show you a few different things while we walk towards the back room because there's something back here in the very back of the building that you're gonna to wanna to see if you come here to Terror Trader. What's going on, baby girl? The Fangoria Warlock cover? <laughs> That's yours? All right, all right, we'll get that too. <laughs> there's so many things here that you're gonna want if you're a fan of horror. We're gonna come back, we're gonna visit it in just a moment. Like I said, we gotta make our way towards the back, but look at this. Oh man. Everything here is just freaking beautiful. And then the trick or treat studios masks, the coffin shelves. Oh, let's get a little closer sweep of these. Look at that. Almost there, almost there. Now, a couple months ago, we were here at Terror Trader doing a signing. It went pretty good. We got to meet a bunch of people that are fans of the show. And guess what? If you're watching this, we're a fan of you for watching the show because it means the world to us. Are you ready for it? We wanted to show this so badly when we were here last time, but way back here in the corner, this room right here, their oddities room, you gotta lose your mind. Wherever I come, bad luck is coming my way. Wherever I go, hard luck is dead and stay. Good luck never stays a day. A bad luck's always coming my way. Hey guys, this is Jason Swore. I'm the co-owner of Terror Trader and we're in my oddities room where I want to show you five things that I can't live without. All right guys, the first thing I want to talk about is my only cursed object, man. This is my suicide siren. This is something that, um, it's my prized possession, something I'll never sell ever, but it's something that I, it, it means a lot to me. Now I know a lot of people are like, you're touching a cursed object, and there's a story behind this that it is okay I should touch this cursed object. So what this thing is, it's an old phonograph, right? A record player that um, is linked to uh, four suicides, uh, females only and related. So um, there's a big history behind this thing, but I had to go all the way back to New Jersey and, and pick this thing up and interview the families and just to, to, to square away a story to find out that literally it's either the record, the phonograph, there's something about the, one of these two that uh, they have found playing um, underneath people from Yun Hong um, in people's, uh, I guess, residences as they jumped out of windows, all types of really creepy stuff. Now, the family has asked me to remove the needle from the tone arm, and ever since that needle has been removed, uh, it's been over 20, 30 years, they said there has never been any issues. So, no needle in the tone arm. Um, this is why I said I could touch it. There's been never an issue since we've had it, but this is a bona fide uh, cursed object that I um, is actually the start of my oddities collection. The second thing I don't want, I probably could never live without uh, in my audience room right now is my witch's tower. Now, what is the witch's tower? It's a very good question. This is actually a, an item that um, I found online of all places and uh, the matte black tower with the crystal uh, on top really just spoke to me. So whatever, I thought it was a nice little um, decor piece for our audience room. What happened is we started catching instances um, up to like 12 different instances where this crystal would turn and move. Uh, we have a video, we have all types of stuff. It moved to the two o'clock. So we were wondering, okay, well, this is some, some crazy stuff going on. Is there some paranormal activity going on? Um, I eventually contacted the, the lady who actually produced this out of Florida. Real quick story. 
she told me that she is a white witch, so an earthy witch, that this was built and, and put together as a, um, a way to ward off any evil or anything bad. Um, she mentioned that she had a really horrible 25 year relationship, abusive relationship, where she actually fled a town with her kids and moved to Florida. And I was like, okay, that's tragic. I hate to hear that. And she goes, well, here's the weird part. Now, I don't know this lady for anything. She says, the place that I left was Chandler, Arizona, the exact same place where this thing ended back up. Now, what does that mean? I don't know, about the tens of thousands of towns in this, uh, in this country, this thing came back to the place that she dreads the worst, right? So uh, that being said, there is some energy, there is some activity on this thing, and it's something that will never sell, uh, but it will always be on display here at Terra Trader. All right, this next item is something that I, uh, I, I can't sell because I have to test it before it sells. And I'm talking about my actual vintage uh, shock therapy machine that was actually used in a, a, a an insane asylum. I don't know if you call it that these days, but in New York. Um, this thing it dates back to the 60s time frame. And uh, to find an actual shock therapy machine that actually still in operation was very hard to find. And, and one that was used in, a, in an asylum um, you know, for decades. So um, I had it, I actually had it to the point where I put the everything on my head at one point. I had it plugged in and I was just too much of a chicken to actually push the button and actually give myself a shock. But before I ever sell this thing, I will shock myself with it. I don't know why, I'm not that type of weird guy, all right? But that's something that I truly love, uh, part of this audience collection. Yeah, I'm just gonna say it right now, that when you do decide- <laughs> <want> some video? <laughs> yeah, whenever you do decide to test this out fully, I wanna be there, I wanna flip the switch. Okay. <laughs> like, I love you, man, yeah. but- I, okay. I've had. Uh, I, I've came close, man, but it was like, okay, this is... <laughs> Do you have any idea of how old? Like uh, 60s. 1960s? Yeah, yeah, 1960s. I think it's beautiful. And then this guy over here is just creeping me out watching me. Yes, I know. So that's why... <laughs> <laughs> giving me chills, man. <laughs> and he's actually from a uh, East Coast dark ride. That was something that... I, I would collect a lot of dark ride stuff, right? You know, vintage dark ride stuff. So, hence, that's from a New Jersey boardwalk. I have a car from uh, Dante's Inferno, uh, Coney Island, and all that stuff. So I, I try to collect, I actually have some actual prop from Spookarama out of Coney Island as well. So trying to collect these little items, like especially that head was so creepy, I could not pass them up. And, uh, and so, and plus it's probably scared thousands, hundreds of thousands of children in New Jersey for decades, you know? So uh, it's been a really cool thing. So but yes, he's wearing my, <laughs> my shock therapy machine. I love right it, there. I love it. <laughs> My next piece is uh, a satanic skull carving by famous Dutch artist Dolan Carrig. So the thing I love about this item is it's, a, it's about a 150, 200 year old skull, um, and which is not rare. You know, there's plenty of these, especially coming out of Europe, but they're, they're the famous art Dylan Carrick is just an amazing artist that takes this and, and does these insanely, incredibly, I don't even know how to explain it, especially this one, the satanic side of this. This makes this skull, probably the most evil skull that I have here at, uh, at Terra Trader. It is filled with, it looks like, battles between good and evil, devils, there's pentagrams on this, the upside down crosses, the pieces that he took off from the actual skull and actually turning it upside down crosses on top of the, the, the cap of the, the skull is just incredible. Um, very painstakingly done, uh, time consuming, and it's a one of a kind work of art that can't be replicated. The last part of my collection that I, I love and I continue to grow is my talking board collection. My, my spirit board, Ouija board, or whatever, I guess whatever you guys want to call it out there. But this is something that is a, an ever, never ending <laughs> hunt for me. Cause there was, you know, hundreds of different models made. I really don't collect anything that is, I guess, later than 1950s, 1960s. And then I tossed up all the way down to the early 1900s. The thing about these are, oh, I love, the more dingy, the more used, the better. You know, uh, we all know, you know, the, the history behind uh, Ouija boards, spirit boards, um, or talking boards, if you, if you want to call it that, uh, that how it could open a portal. And the person you're trying to talk to may not be the person that comes through. And that's kind of the beauty. What were these used for? So as I was walking into the oddities room, I had commented, you know, it's kind of strange. Every time I step foot into here, I get this shooting pain up through my nose, kind of like into my, my head right here. 
And you said... <laughs> we, you are not alone. So um, I want to say, and my math may be off, but you're around, you're about a dozen now of people who have said that exact same thing through the right side, a shooting pain through your head. Now, I, I document everybody who comes to who has an experience or has something that is off canter or something weird. Most people are feeling a heavy feeling in here. Uh, we've had people get nausea and actually get yeah. sick. Um, a few pass out on, or feel like they're going to pass out. They had to leave the store. I don't know what it is about this room. There's a lot of dead stuff in this room, right? So, um, and there's things in here that I was been told, uh, like we have voodoo ultra jars from the 1920s that turn this as basically a dog bowl full of meat and all the dead spirits of dogs, right? So, um, and that's kind of causes a frenzy. I don't know if that has to do anything with what you feel, but there's a lot of stuff going on in here, a lot of energy going in here. And, uh, and so I try to document everything. <laughs> That's cool. That's, I mean, I didn't think much of it at first because right outside there's these beautiful dioramas, Hi. these massively big dioramas. And I'm thinking, oh, maybe it's like, maybe I'm smelling the paint. Maybe they were fresh when they came in. But no, as soon as I step into this room, whoop, little sharp, straight up, straight up starts for like right here on the side of my nose. And as if like, kind of mm -hmm. like a nail going into my face, mm -hmm. you do have some pretty 1960s medical equipment. We do. And a lot of skulls. We do. And some skulls uh, with over, I mean, we have some skulls that are over 1400 years old, you know? Some of, uh, have a one behind you that's a thousand year old and a person died in battle, was actually shot in the head with an arrow. Um, so there is, people have died tragically, uh, you know, and we have the remains in this room and it's, um, you know, anything could happen. We've had paranormal investigations here a few times and with uh, very high activity, so. Hmm. You are not alone. Seriously, you're not alone here. It keeps getting worse. <laughs> we better get her out of here. When I step out, I'm fine. <laughs> like, it's not enough to bother me to where I go, oh, God, I gotta leave. But it's like, that's interesting. I think I'll stay a while. <laughs> now, of course, we want to show you everything, but we're not going to. We got to leave something to the imagination. Something so whenever you do come here to Terror Trader and you walk through the oddities room, that you see things, you discover things. So consider this a little bit of a a quick little touch, but there's plenty of stuff here to see. Trust me. I'm back out here in the main part of the store. Jessica and I absolutely love photo opportunities, and this place is filled with them. They build them and they always change. Some are always here, but some of them change. So if you do see something that you like, you follow them on social media, and you want to come check it out, do quick, because it's not going to be here forever. I mean, look at this. RIP and loving memory of Dan O'Bannon. Oh, this thing is amazing. Right? Of course, they have Trick or Treat Studios masks and other props and figurines and different artists that come here. And everything is just set so nicely. Everything's lit so beautifully. It's like a, a perfect horror museum all right here in Chandler, Arizona. The beauty about this piece, besides from one of my favorite movies in the world, right, the thing, um, is the artist, she just graduated recently, uh, Tom Savini School of Makeup, where this item right here, she's made two of these, well, to this date, she's made two of these. The first one, Tom Savini owns, and guess who owns the second one, right? So, very happy to have this in our store. Jessica and I have been talking about getting a neon sign for quite some time. That one right there, Freak Show, is kind of nice, but take a look at this little, and I'm not entirely sure what he is, some sort of goblin-esque demonic creature next to a pretty awesome coffin. <sighs> I wonder what his name is. He's got little legs. You see this? Look at that. Ah, I don't care. I want him. I can see Jessica keeping him next to the bed. Everywhere you look, there's something perfectly on display. And this is how you do a store. It's almost like a store slash museum, right? The different gremlins. There's a gizmo down there on the bottom. Jessica, what did you find over here? Nothing. <laughs> Is this the piece that you want to take home? Right? Oh. I feel like we need this for our grim up all night. What do you think? Boopies. Boopies, that's right. One of the really nice things about Terror Trader they open up their store to different artists and people who can sell their wares. Get it? Trader, Terror Trader. And this one here, it's called Terror Trader Video. It's like walking into an old video store. VHS tapes, $6.99 each. Man, this takes me way back. 
West Coast video in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And then uh, Doug's video dugout in Zelenople, Pennsylvania. My gosh. Look at this on the other side of the room. Now, I wish that our video store had stuff like this whenever I was renting movies. That one there. And then coming right down to here, I don't think Jessica has seen this. This pumpkin that just kind of spit up all over the place. Now, obviously, behind Jessica is a, a giant, giant picture of the creature from the creature from the Black Lagoon. But can you imagine like a spooky family having this in their kitchen? And as their little kid grows up, they mark them. It's like, oh, how tall are you compared to the creature? There you are. You're almost to shoulder height. I don't think this is life size though, because he's a lot taller than me. Still pretty cool. Uh -huh. I, I wish I had horror parents growing up. My mom liked horror movies. My dad, yeah, he actually he's walked out of. Uh, scream 2 in the movie theater. Really? Whenever Jada Pinkett Smith got like stabbed, he was like, I'm done, and he was gone. That was, <laughs> that was an iconic scene. Right? Yeah. That's all right. He, my, my dad has grown to like horror movies now, but not back then. All right, I am a mask head. I am a junkie when it comes to masks. I treat them like works of art, like paintings, right? Because they are works of art. And there's a few artists, I mean, you can go your Jordi Duchel, you can do your Casey Love, those are your, those are your big guys. But a lot of people don't understand who Pete is from, from a Devil's Workshop, which I'm a huge collector of Pete's stuff, which you can see some of his shock fink, a lot of his number ones, and he does a lot of cool stuff. And Pete even may be making a, uh, a Terror Trader mask coming up. We'll let you know about that. But some of the other things, I display a lot of my stuff, I mean, a, a little small portion of my collection, but we have some good stuff, like this Sargoth uh, uh, mask here, from Don Post mask from 1970s. The cool thing about this, it was painted by Rob Tharp, who Rob Tharp is one of the guys who helped create the uh, H3 mask, the Halloween 3 mask. So it's a little bit of a six degrees of separation, if I could get into Rob Tharp's life here and actually have him paint a mask for me. And it's one of the very few, a handful of glow in the dark Sargoths that ever existed. But a lot of other stuff that comes through here, um, tons of good stuff. I even have the actual Dracula, um, I guess it is a symbol, right? The, 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 the mold, from the mold, uh, from the movie Dracula, the, the, What's the, the word? Emblem. I'm, emblem. Is that the word I'm looking the for? Crest. Emblem. Yeah, the crest. Uh, and it is from the actual original movie mold. So I try to collect cool stuff like that, but when it comes to masks, I'm all in. I'm all in. I love them. Uh, the creepier, the better. The more outrageous, the better. Now let's take a little bit of a dark ride into the newest addition to Terror Trader. <laughs> Go ahead and take us yes. into the fun house. Okay, think. very good. So, yes, I did acquire, by the grace of God, I acquired a car from Dante's Inferno, from Coney Island, that ran for over 40 years uh, and scared, I don't know, tens of thousands, or maybe hundreds of thousands of kids, right? So um, I, I sourced the car, finally got it here from the East Coast, shipped to the West Coast. So one of the things you can get in, take a picture of, have a good time, uh, and maybe relive some memories if you're from that side of the world. Also, if you're not from that side of the world, come get a casket ride. That's right, you can actually come to Terror Trader, jump in a real casket, fall asleep, whatever. We'll give you about 30 seconds in that and then uh, we'll let you go. But now you know how it feels to be dead. Now you may have noticed Jessica in the background sitting at a table that looks like it's straight out of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Well, you'd be correct. Now here's the thing. Whenever we were here a couple months ago doing a signing, we intended to do a video, but it was just too darn busy. And then they mentioned that they were gonna be doing this photo opportunity. You know how we love our photo ops. And I promise them when we come back, it'll be for this and a whole bunch more. Are you having a lot of fun over there? <laughs> now, here's the thing. They're constantly changing their photo ops. They build these all in-house. This is all their work. And it's changing all the time. They told us that this is gonna be here until April and then something else is coming. So if you want to come and get a photo in your favorite horror movie, you gotta do it now. Hey, look at this. Jessica, you're, you're too into this. <laughs> crap, 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 crap. Like an egg. Like an egg, that's right. It's just beautiful. Well done, well done. And look at this. High above the family table, like a glowing sun, 
is a lamp made out of skin and human faces. Now, of course, it's not real skin. Well, I don't know. This is Arizona after all. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Or am I? I don't know. It is the desert. Strange things happen in the desert. But here's a reminder. If you want to see it, get here before April. I'm not entirely sure when it's going to be taken down, but you want to see. This is making me nervous. This is making me nervous. Look at that. Oh, man. I think it's pretty much it for our time here at Terror Trader in Chandler, Arizona. Remember, you got to come down here and you got to check out all the different things that they have, especially the photo opportunities before they go away. And with that being said, happy Halloween. Wherever I come, I'm in love. Just come my way. Wherever I go, hard luck. Is that it stays? Good luck never stays a day. A bad luck's always coming my way.